Good morning. Day three of our trip in Malawi. Today we go to three schools which are linked with UK schools. Napachi, Tugalu and Kaputu. And then we're going to visit a children's after school club to see how the, the children enjoy themselves after they've been at school. Apache School is very close to the main road and has an excellent new sign with the entrance only being a few feet away from the main buildings. We've arrived at Apache School. This is linked with Old Bexley and there's a beautiful mural that has been painted and is now up in the teacher's office. Moving out to the grounds outside, you can see the beautiful acacia trees. Also, see some rose bushes, or what look like rose bushes. Hello. In classrooms of junior and senior sections. Chris with the head teacher Kingsley and we're going to now see a classroom of standard three to see how they are learning in this classroom. <laughs> hello, hello. Now we're in to observe an English lesson in the school and this is standard four. Oh, this is 
class, we don't have uh, boys. Yes, Wilson, Hamida. I'm with Mark, the link coordinator, and he's going to tell us what the school are doing with new trees. Okay. Mark, well, tell me what, what you're doing with yeah, the trees. We are planting the trees here yeah, so that we should replace the surrounding. As you see, we have so many gullies here. We are taking off our land. So instead, we are pressing the trees so that we should maintain the land. That's what we are doing. Okay, how many trees do you hope to plant? Uh, by now we are planning to plant 500 trees. 500? And yes, up to that extent area there. Yeah, all that land we want to, to resume the trees now. And how, how long? Behind that school there we have a forest, our own forest. Okay. Yeah, so we also want to resume this land here. And what, what do you do? We, you have your own forest. What do you use the wood for? Yeah, those forests, we're using them for uh, uh, when we want to, 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 to have some sheds. So yes. we go there and when we want to read some renas, they go there and read. And uh, we use those trees whenever we are cooking there, we are cooking porridge. So we use them as firewood. Yes. Yeah, and also whenever we want to construct something, we also use them for uh, planks. Okay. So yep. trees are very useful. They're very useful. Yes. And useful. what sort of trees are these you're planting? What type? These are local ones. Local trees. We use local trees. Yeah, and like this one here. Yeah, like this so, one. So, so for those watching, yeah, the little trees the will eventually ones. grow to this. This is the same sort of tree, yeah. as you can see, it gives shade and gives plenty of wood for firewood. Sure. Thank you, Mark. Very good. Thanks very much. And this is the acacia trees that the school planted seven years ago. They call it the school forest. Very useful ground for having classes in the shade and various other uses. So these are teachers' houses that various charities have been able to fund. The ones that are here have been funded uh, through Old Bexley. And the teachers' houses are, are really crucial because with the schools being far outside the towns, to have the teachers living on site is a real benefit. And as you see, they've also got some uh, bushes and foliage around. The school has a small orchard growing various produce, which the children eat at the school. And each morning the children are fed before school starts. No, mine doesn't take. Nice. Tugaloo. School sign. We've now arrived at Tugaloo School, which is linked with Item in the UK. It's a school which has 924 students. And as you can see, very similar design to where we were at Napache. They have a feeding program at the school with a kitchen very much the same as we see in other schools. Also, there is a church building being built, which they use for services and use for other meetings. The school has a playing field, but as you can see, it is quite a hard surface, although grass. They love playing football. 
with the goalposts just pieces of tree branch. They also have classes in the shade under trees. We're now going in to observe one of their classes. This is one of the classes where Chris is introducing them to Sammy the Starfish. Chris is enjoying introducing Sammy to the children. Come on. We're now at Kaputu School, which is the very first school where Starfish started, and we'll be interviewing. Chris Knott a little bit later on to give us the story of how starfish began here at Kaputu. But here we've got the children, they're just about to finish school because school finishes at uh, 2.30. They're just about to go home, but they've come to greet us, which is lovely. Here we are at the original school building, which now is just really a shell. The other building is over there, which is the white one with no roof at all. I'm going to now just interview Chris Knott, the chair of trustees of Starfish, who came here to begin the work because Kaputu is where Starfish all began. Chris. Give us a brief, a, your brief views of what it was like in Kaputu back when it started. Well, Peter does very few things in a brief fashion, but uh, about 22 years ago I came to this uh, school. Uh, there was a church group meeting here and I received a letter in the UK and I came to this school and it was completely run down and uh, I sensed that uh, God wanted me to... Uh, build, it says here, building the kingdom of God in the lives of children. Build the church in the school and uh, over the years I've often returned here to see how it's grown and we've built a number of uh, classroom blocks and boreholes and toilets but just now we've been watching some of the children's clubs which operate here every Friday and it brought me to a little bit of tears because I recognised that what God started 22 years ago is still carrying on. So uh, it's just amazing to be back. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. A lot of schools have boreholes, which are essential for providing water for the children and also for the local village. A borehole has a pump manually operated, filling up the water bucket which is then walked by the ladies, mostly, to wherever they live. And here you'll see the lady about to put this bucket on her head. The lady with water on her head. Amazing. Thank you. Here we're in the uh, teacher's office with the head teacher here. Say hello to the head teacher. It's great. And this school is linked with St Margaret's School in the UK. In each of the uh, teacher's offices, they always put on the posters on the wall of grades, of teachers, attendances. So it's very interesting to look at everything they have on the boards. And this is the Kaputu Children's Club. 
about 70 children are here and across the Salima area starfish are running 14 children's clubs here after school they play games they have activities and also they have Bible teaching every Friday Bournemouth, who is uh, in charge of the children's clubs for Starfish. Bournemouth, tell us just briefly about children's clubs, how many you have? Yeah, as of now we have uh, 14 centres of children's club where we operate with our activities. Yes. And how many children are in each club? Each club, uh, you know, on average, we can say we have uh, about 50 or 60 children, yes. And what do you think the impact of the clubs are on the children and on their families? The impact is so big because uh, most of the children they have changed their behaviour. And uh, we have a lot of testimonies, even uh, in school attenders, most of them, the ones who attend children's clubs, they like school because they are also encouraged from the clubs. Their parents are also happy because they have seen changes in behaviour in their children. That's really good to know. And are you going to be increasing the number of clubs? Yes, we are, because there are many people who are knocking on the door looking for us to help them. It's up to a time whereby we are going to arrange and meet those, encouraging them to say how they can they start. Because it's a thing that they do on their own. Starfish is there just to support them in teaching uh, the volunteers and uh, some other materials if they are there. That's really great. Thank you very much, Bourne, for telling us about it. Thank you so much. I'm glad. So, first of all, I want to greet you. Morning, no, say. Morning, no, say. Morning, no, say. sacrificed with Christ and I have no longer I who live but Christ lives in me. Psalm 23 this one Jesus is John 23 this one the Lord is my shepherd I shall not be in want. I face and six I face and six this one children obey your parents in the Lord for this is life honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with, with promise. Yeah. I have a, a song. When I am down and all my soul so weary, when troubles come and my heart burdens me, when I am still and with fear in the silence, he will come and sit you all with me. You raise me up like a stand on mountain. You raise me up to open stormy seas. I 
And we brought a Velcro throwing ball game, which they're enjoying. The new game has caused all the children to go quiet while they're watching. Never seen anything like it. <coughs> Kids learn very well. Soon pick up the game. I know. New games are causing quite a stir with the children. I think they're all wanting to have a go. So we might be here for hours. <laughs> <laughs> 